What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 117 of the Noise Podcast, part of the Noise Podcast Network, and sponsored by Stereo Brain Records. I am your host at slash your boy Chris Pugh, and look across here. There is someone different sitting there. It is the man, uh, the owner extraordinaire of Noise Card at UK, Jack Holloway. Mate, cheers for joining me. This is sick. Uh, it's going to be really cool to do one of these with you. We were just saying, weren't we? This is so long overdue. Uh, mm. Yeah, different, different face to Sam today feels a bit weird to be sat in those shoes but i'll do my best i think what's really good like you meant you alluded to it there there's so many albums that me and you could have spoken about in in detail and in length and it is kind of weird that we haven't done this until now but mate what an album to choose to do this for the first time a good one to start Right, I've got things to say about uh, this album that we are going to discuss today. Uh, before we do that, um, the Noise Podcast is a rock and metal podcast sponsored by Stereo Brand Records. We're available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, basically anywhere you get your podcasts, we will be there. You can follow us on Twitter at Noise Podcast, and you can follow the general Noise website handle at Noise UK. Uh, the best way to support us is by subscribing or slash liking slash following, depending on whichever uh, podcast service you use. Uh, that would be great. Um, me and Sam haven't been as active. It's usually me and Sam here. Me and Sam haven't been as active over the last couple of weeks that so we would have liked. Uh, I can assure you that's not because we got lazy. And it's much more to do with the fact of it's been an insane, insane couple of weeks for me and Sam. But there was no way I was going to miss discussing this album today. Uh, so, uh, Jack, unless there's something you want to go over, I don't see any reason why we should hang a bear. I reckon we should just get get going with this get me into it let's go let's let's go man uh dark sun by day seeker is out on november 4th via spine farm records it's the alternative rock band's fifth full-length record and the follow-up to 2019's very very good sleep talk in fact let's actually that's probably a decent place to begin jack um the first time you discovered day seeker i want i don't want to sound uh i don't sound too egotistical here and suggest that maybe i told you about them uh but I'd imagine you would have discovered them through conversation because that's how I found out about them. I saw a, just a swathes of people on Twitter talking about this amazing yet um, really um, open yet really interesting record sleep talk by his band day sick i thought i took it on the gym worst case scenario i'm 10 minutes in i'll just change i was changing over to a death metal album sound within 10 minutes i was just like hooked on this kind of on on this really mesmerizing magical voice that Rory Rodriguez has. That's how I discovered Day Seeker. So, saw loads of people talk about it on Twitter, figured I'd check him out in the gym. 10 minutes in, I was like, this is really good. This is different, but it's really good. Uh, how did you discover them? I mean, like you, it was hard to escape seeing their name bandied about. I'm sure there was a there was a a point in time where they might have done a cover of a Linkin Park song or something like that in the past. If they have, I want to find that because I'd imagine Roy Rodriguez sounds amazing doing Jester Bennington I'm, vocals. I might, I might be wrong, but there was a cover that he did of something, if not. And uh, I thought it was amazing and it kind of like popped in and popped out the cultural sort of, you know, zeitgeist of things do really quickly. But yeah, just heard it, uh, he- heard of them talked about a lot. And then I think it's, they've come up before with like the Holden absence. You can't get away from the Holden absence, you know, sort of comparison when holding absence were coming through so you kind that's of a nice a yeah there. that's nice yeah i'm into that um, yeah but yeah i mean i found them from you mo- mainly the first time that i i uh, you knew that <laughs> the first i couldn't time remember I- but i want i wanted the gratification anyway <laughs> <laughs> they, um, um yeah sleep sleep talk was the first album I, I jumped in on and i still i still well i listened to this album and thought i've not listened to that enough um <laughs> But yeah, yeah. The Sleep Talk is a special uh, record. Burial Plot is absurd. And that that was the first, that was the song I heard where I was like, this is unlike most albums I've heard. Before we start talking about Dark Sun, I'm just curious. Um, do you think Sam would like Dayseeker? Do, do you know what? I was having exactly the same thought. I did a final listen today when I was on my way into work. Hours journey. Perfect. Literally pulled into the car park with uh, the last song. Amazing. Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, bother me that will Jack. Particularly if uh, this sounds awful, but particularly Dark Sun, I think would be a bad place to start, Sam. But that's a that's a Sam problem, not an everyone else problem. Right? Yeah. I want to be clear on that. Yeah. Um, just because I think there's things in there that he would, yeah, that this just wouldn't be his sort of 
thing from the outset. He'd have to like build up to it. <laughs> you know what he's like. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I worry that his response would be, yeah, I like Roy Rodriguez. There's not a lot going on, is there? And I think that would really bother me. Hmm. I think that would take me. <laughs> I think uh, the reason why I think there's a chance that he would really like them is that he does have adoration for Sleep Token. Now, Sleep Token are more performative than Dayseeker. And there is more musical complexity in Sleep Token, especially with the drummer of Sleep Token, who is honestly a, an android, I'm convinced. Um, so Sleep Token are more performative than Dayseeker, but there is there is such beauty to Dayseeker's music, and especially, I don't want to hark on about Roy Rodriguez in this episode, because I don't want to make it seem like he's the whole show, when actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention that there are moments where it's evident that Dayseeker are very much a band, as opposed to Roy Rodriguez featuring musicians. Um, but because of the uniqueness of Roy Rodriguez, I feel like there's a chance that Sam would become wrapped up in that. I'm going to give it a go. I have showed him Neon Grave before while I've been at his house and we're having a few beers. And he has told me, oh, this is this is good, man. I'm like, I like this. So I'm I'm going to give it a go with Sam. And obviously me and you have been in the uh, our group chat kind of relentlessly mentioning Dayseeker over the last week or so. So I, I have faith, but I do feel, I, all, I have faith, but I also juxtapose that with the idea that there's also every chance that Sam would be like, yeah, the vocals are all right, but the songs are boring. And I, I'd find that quite upsetting. Yeah, I'd be really upset by that. But let me know how that goes. Maybe you can report back. I will report back with violence if need be, because if he doesn't like it, I'm going to be really annoyed about it. Um, so I, I suppose, Jack, I, I don't want us to overdo on the singles because the singles have been out for a while now. Um, but let, let's we, I have to talk about them because they're so ridiculous. I, I, I remember I heard Neon Grave for the first time. I'd kind of... Not forgotten about Dayseeker, but it'd been a while since I listened to them. Sleep Talkers obviously came out in 2019. I blasted that album throughout 2020 and thought it was great. And then towards towards like the end of 2021, you know, as you do, you move on to other bands and get hooked into a cycle, listen to other bands. And when I heard Neon Grave, it immediately told me Neon Grave did that this coming Dayseeker album is really going to be unlike anything else I've heard. Uh, Neon Grave is this genius, beautiful, yet harrowing and dark written song. Of, of, the, of the singles, Jack, uh, Neon Grave, Without Me, uh, Dream State and Crying While You're Dancing. Do you have a particular favourite? Uh, yeah, I mean, Dream State, man. As a, as any kind of Linkin Park fan. <laughs> yeah, I thought that, that, that might is. be yours, yeah. Uh, and that was, I was going to say, you know, I know we're not going to uh, get Wax Lyrical on... on uh, the the singles so much but dream state that song is special i know neon grave was the first and i heard it and i was like hello i might consider my interest peaked and then without me followed on that i mean both of them are fantastic uh you know the opening riffs they kind of lean towards the the darker heavier side of you know Mm. case seekers sort of music and their range but dream state for me was the whole package this that was the that was the song i was like they've really encapsulated that there's something really special when a band can hit that melody and that um and, and pull together those simps with it, just everything that that would annoy me that sam would say that there wouldn't be much going on because my particular comment with dream state is there's so much going on yeah there's a lot going on dream state they, yeah they pull it together in the way that they do um i love that song so good a special mention for me, I'm kind of, it's 49.51 between Without Me and Crying While You're Dancing as my favourite single. I just think that vocal crawl by Rory in the chorus of Crying While You're Dancing is just unmatched, man. Like, I, I literally haven't heard anything this year from any vocalist that comes anywhere near the, the 20 seconds of Rory Rodriguez on the chorus of Crying While You're Dancing. It's just magnificent. It's like literally like a magician at work kind of stuff. So I think I'd, I'd be 51, 49, 51 towards Crying While You Dance is my favourite single. But Without Me has that like just gorgeous, sumptuous chorus that is just so irresistible. You can't stop listening to it. I, just, I, I think Day Seeker will definitely end up being my um, most listened to band on Spotify this year. I have blasted Day Seeker over the last six months. At least once a day I've been listening to them in some form. Just think they're amazing, man. They're such a ridiculous yeah. band. But it's undeniable, isn't it? I, I, and we'll get into that as we talk about the other songs on, on on the album. But it's just 
there's something about the way that they've composed this album and the songs on this album in particular that it's just I mean they've always been very good at doing that they've always been good at drawing you in and their music yeah. is catchy as it you know it, it just is but this because of that the way that they've they've driven the simps through the songs and the way they've brought in some of those 80s vibes some of what you've seen you know what you and I have listened to Rory Rodriguez's uh, other project uh, you know, you can hear those influences come in and it's there's just there's yeah. so much to it. Uh, but yeah, I'm a big fan. Didn't want to overdo it on the singles because obviously any listeners literally would have probably, especially if you're a big Die Seeker fan, and let's be honest, if you listen to this, you probably are a big Die Seeker fan, you would have heard the singles by now. Uh, so uh, let's get into Homesick. Homesick lands uh, fourth on the album, I believe. Um, and it opens with this kind of light, heart-filling synth beat. And it reminded me, Jack, of that Heart of Gold album, if you yeah. Uh, agree. Yeah, yeah, it did. Uh, I mean, it was like, for me as well, it, after you've gone through the first three tracks, which are already released, like I said, they go a little heavier. They lean mm. into that um, that that heavier Dayseeker sound. To then move to this, it was like, oh, okay, they've done a little bit of something for everyone, and now they're going to show you kind of where they're moving to and what they've got going on now. Um, but that song is infectious. <laughs> I'm really glad you mentioned that because I feel like Homesick illuminates everything that's great about Dayseeker as a band because, and, I mean, how many times so far have we mentioned Roy Rodriguez? Is now it's probably like 30 oh, already. It, it, it's probably 30 already in this <laughs> review and it's probably going to end up being like 80, 90 towards the end. Roy Rodriguez, bingo, is the next game that me, you and Sam will play. But, he is the centerpiece. Let's just call it what it is. He is. But I feel like the collective songwriting, specifically on Homesick, really gives him extra elevation because on Homesick, there are these really beautifully crafted and timed snare shots by Mike Carl, the drummer, that add this extra emphasis to Rory's melodies. If you listen to Homesick, and you listen out for what Mike Carl is doing. He really punches in in between kind of Rory's vowel sections. And it makes such a massive difference. Um, it's not something really I would have picked up on before I started learning the drums. Not that I'm anywhere near like a professional drum player or anything like that. But uh, because I've been learning like the uh, amateur style drums and thinking about the timing of, of a certain uh, drum fill. Um, it's really the perfectly crafted and perfectly mixed. It really punches in when Rory needs need it to at the right time I, I do feel like homesick more so than any day seeker song i've heard really reflects the ability of the band as a unit as opposed to as i met as i alluded to in the introduction here rory featuring session musicians and um, i'm not sure what you think about that i think homesick is a like beautiful music yeah i mean there's no there's no doubt that homesick wouldn't be i mean the whole album wouldn't be the album without rory and we'll keep yeah, saying yeah. it and we'll we'll just apologize in advance because it's probably easier but yeah, he is yeah. he is what sets incredible band apart from you know what i would consider a band that are heads and waves above others Do you know mm -hmm. what i mean he's, yeah. the, he's the thing isn't he yeah he's, he's the thing he's, yeah he's the focal point and that's that's just what it is but you're absolutely right and as a non-drummer what I did notice at least was that it had that edge. It still has that punch. It still has that quality to it where you don't kind of, it's not jarring. You don't jump from, you know, post hardcore song to an eighties song. And the reason yeah. for that is everything that's going on around it. You know, there are still riffs sort of laden in there. They're just, there's just a huge amount of layers of things going on. And you're right in terms of the drumming as well. That gives it that edge that just doesn't make it an out and out you know 80s kind of song it just has the vibe instead it's a, it's a brilliant meld um but yeah i mean but by, by i i think by far the catchiest song on the album mm. yeah I, i'd agree I, I i forgot to mention the introduction that i should mention now uh dark sun is written primarily about the tragic passing of rory's father although that it does make sense that i bring that up now actually because uh gonna talk about midnight eternal and the title track dark sun jack i'm gonna give you the lead on this one because I, I i spoke about homesick could i just ask you that um i uh, by the way i adore these two songs but there's a little bit of um I feel like it may have been a missed opportunity. Do you feel like they could have made Midnight Eternal and Dark Sun into like one six-minute title track? 
I, I did. Yeah, I did. The, the Midnight Eternal was the only song that I wrote. It, 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 you're so used to Rory going into that next gear, and I'll talk about mm. that on a song later on as well, that it sort of, it didn't feel like it was missing anything, but you're bang on. It felt like a missed opportunity that they could have done more with. And they absolutely nailed that on on two songs that come later on uh, in terms of, yeah, I won't get into it now. I'll get to it later. I, I, I can already guess what John's talking about. Um, I, I reckon mine now it's the same as yours. Oh, sorry, yeah, uh, carry on. I, you know, and I liked Midnight Eternal for being that kind of breaking point, that sort of spotlight very much on Rory, you know, uh, lyrically, obviously, it's so poignant as much of this mm. this album uh, is. I just found myself longing for a little bit of a punch. And then yeah. I think if they'd have merged that into Dark Sun, you'd have probably got that a little bit more. Dark Sun was the track that I that I, that I really said there's so much going on here yeah. that it's impressive that they've even managed to kind of make it cohesive and listenable. Because <laughs> can you imagine yeah. what that looks like in the studio for them? I just can't even imagine how you be like you're bringing in all of that influence and and how they just haven't sort of let that run away with them at all. But the title track's brilliant well as well. It's got like that really really bold synth to it. It's really yeah. prominent in the mix. Um, you can almost feel them getting a little braver <laughs> as they go along. Mm -hmm. You know, once yeah. they get the first three out of the way and then they've moved through, you know, I like that sometimes there's almost a dual melody between, you know, the vocal line and then that synth that also like kind of interweaves through it. It's it's brilliant. It, it makes for almost two points to kind of catch your ear throughout, plus everything else that's going on. Yeah, from a musical standpoint, they're both they're both incredible. So for day seeker fans that are listening to this, wondering what exactly I mean by and uh, what me and you mean by like a missed opportunity on a six minute epic, uh, Midnight Eternal it is really like a kind of two and a half minute interlude for the title track. So much so that Midnight Eternal ends this huge vocal crawl that Rory like screams their uh, dark sun. To which I thought, um, and you mentioned Midnight Eternal was the one track for you where you thought, mm, could they have done more with this? As I was listening, I thought, yeah, you know, they could have made this a massive six and a half minute epic. If if Midnight Eternal and Dark Sun were fused together and the build, because Midnight Eternal literally is built and the final few seconds blend directly into the opening of Dark Sun. So I do kind of wonder, as brilliant as the, that idea is, and it does work fantastically, there is just a part of me that thinks, could you have done a seven minute song here that like kind of pushes you into kind of, um, pop synth mastodon territory I don't know I've got such a level of um, reverence and love for Daisy because I think they can kind of achieve anything they want <laughs> um, been, they, they're, they're clearly not afraid to be creative to push boundaries to you know be brave in the music they're doing because this is this is them doing that so it kind mm -hmm. of feels like if that was suggested to them that they'd be like yeah let's, let's, let's go for it or at least that's yeah. the perception that I have and why not man that would sound you know, it would sound incredible. If you need to produce a day seeker on your next album, I I will do it if you if you'd like. Of course, <laughs> I will let you record a seven minute song and do absolutely nothing and let you do everything you want to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll, full faith in you. <laughs> I'll do. Um, I'll let you do whatever you want. <laughs> Jack, you uh, made a comment earlier about two particular tracks that you just have what you want to lush over and and discuss i'm going to assume one of them's quicksand jack which is one of the most ridiculous songs i've ever heard i'm going to assume one of them's quicksand jack one of the uh songs that you are desperate to talk about i am but not for the reasons that you thought i mean it's the last two tracks for me that i'm on about that absolutely that that i mean that does that makes it sound as if i'm not stoked about quicksand i absolutely am yeah. and and was but those two felt special we'll get to it i loved quicksand <laughs> And I, I love the way that the song dials up. I love the. It's got a feature on it as well, isn't it? Is uh, Spencer Stewart? Spencer Stewart, yeah. Which, which can I just right? If there's one bone I can pick with with this album, um, I'm not sure why it's there because that, that's what I was going to say. That I yeah, enjoy his on. appearance. Yeah, I, I enjoy the melody, but Rory's so good. I'm not sure what. 
he could have done that, couldn't he? Like if, uh, yeah. if, if they brought Fred Durst in, <laughs> I'd have been like, all right, okay, to be fair, Roy Rodriguez couldn't do that. And I'm not saying Day Six should do a song with Fred Durst. Okay. I'm just saying if they brought in a vocalist that could bring something to the table that Rory couldn't, I would understand. But there really isn't anything that Rory couldn't bring to the table. So I am curious on, on what exactly this feature from Spencer Stewart was there for. Not that it's bad. It's perfectly nice and it works well with the song. But I'm just... I really do feel like Rory could have just done that bit. I, I'm not sure what it's there for. I do just want to add uh, the quicksand, I think, is absurd. Uh, there's a vulnerability. that those, those 45 opening seconds, there's a vulnerability in Rory's voice that is just so, so great. I can't tell you how much I adore the opening minute of this song. It's ridiculous. And um, there's so much kind of... You know, to use the metaphor, Rory's heart is on his sleeve for 50 minutes here, but specifically uh, for, for quicksand, it's almost got this kind of sheepish nature to quicksand. It's kind of naive and shy. I, I just, oh man, honestly, I just think it's brilliant. So good, man. Oh. I'm now forever going to be disappointed that I'm not going to hear Rory Rodriguez hit like a big saw and then hear Fred Durst go like, yeah, kind of behind <laughs> it. I want to hear that. Let's uh, talk about Paper Heart, uh, which I, I think is uh, quite an interesting one uh, because for me, like we focus so much on Rory's vocal ability that sometimes his lyrics can be kind of overlooked. There's a really genius opening depiction of him driving home, feeling the loss and the heartbreak um, of loss of his father and, and from what I'm assuming, potential loss of uh, another relationship in his life in great detail. We, we've, we're wax lyrical. We go into incredible lengths of detail about Rory's ability as a vocalist. But uh, let's talk about his ability as a lyricist, because on paper hearts, I think it really shines through. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you hear you hear him throughout this album. And like you said, he wears everything on, on his sleeve. There's nothing yeah. left untouched. But hearing him so vulnerable in paper heart with nothing to almost mask it, cover it, mm -hmm. or you have to listen. You know, with all the other songs on the album, you could happily listen to to Homesick and think this is an absolute bop. Uh, it yeah. must be about something happy because it's undeniably catchy and and, yeah, and yeah. can't help but bounce to it. You will get surface listeners, won't you? It's just it's it it, it, it it's always the way. You don't have that choice with Paper Heart. It's so raw, no. uh, yeah. and I mean it's gorgeous. It, it it's a welcome break at that point as well when there's been so much going on for it to take this stop and and almost to reflect and you know just allow him to be completely vulnerable on it but i mean it's it's gorgeous isn't it i my curiosity has, has peaked now uh jack the closing one two of parallel and afterglow take it away dude um i've got a little bit i'd like to say about afterglow but mate parallel and afterglow is closing one two the floor Maybe. is yours I mean, for a start, I think I think Parallel's probably the heaviest. You've been through an emotional journey by this point. If you're doing a yeah. track by track and you're listening to the album, then you're listening mm. to us. Yeah. You've made it. You're okay. But Parallel's <laughs> going to hit you like a sack of shit. Yeah, um, it's big, the man. emotional weight on that and the that first verse where he talks so visually about, I think he even mentions about holding, you know, his dad's head and and kind of seeing him in the hospital bed, not knowing what's going to happen next. The song is, it's that summary and it's so centred around that that loss. It's so poignant. It, it feels so hopeless. And despite not having gone through that situation personally myself, I felt so connected to it. It was, it was, it really struck me and caught me off guard the first time I listened to it. It's been a short, it's been a couple of weeks since I've listened to the album. And then I I dive back in this morning. It almost caught me uh, in tears, even having heard it and knew what I was going to expect. But what I absolutely loved was that song almost finishes before it doesn't quite get to a finish, and it kicks straight into Afterglow. Yep, and, that blend is beautiful. And and the the juxtaposition mm -hmm. of yep. the way that it talks about feeling so hopeless and and summarizes how he feels about death of someone so close to him to then move into talking about new life I just thought was the, the most 
impre- if 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 this it just took this album for me into a completely different stratosphere. I just yeah. I couldn't I couldn't believe how clever it was, how well placed yeah. those songs were. I mean, for me, being a father, hearing Afterglow was an incredible thing anyway. But to but the way they did that, the way he talks about that hopelessness, and then combined with this song where he gives you a glimmer of hope at the end where yeah. he talks about things are okay because of this you know this amazing thing in my life i just i was blown away the first time i heard it and i was just as blown away today um inc- just the, the most incredible one too i think it's the most special point on the album i think that after i was sitting as that metaphorical light at the end of the tunnel is a genius way to end this record because the record is a dark harrowing sometimes heinous depiction of the real tragedies that can happen in life and then afterglow just sits as again not to repeat myself that metaphorical hand on your shoulder but actually you know what mate it's tough but you're going to be fine because there's always something positive to live for it's got this kind of lush high vibe tone which completely as you mentioned juxtaposes everything else on the album but it doesn't it doesn't juxtapose everything else on the album in the sense of like, hang on, you've been thrash metal for 45 minutes and now you're a pop band. Not in that sense. It juxtaposes everything else in terms of like, it tries to be like the balancing weight. We've had kind of six ton of harsh reality of difficult times in life. And then we get 6.1 tons of a, but things are going to be all right. And there's always something to live for. Just consistently tugs at your heart string this album. And after going in particular is just this fantastic reminder of that, you know, there's always something uh, that you can strive towards regardless of the, the dark time that you, uh, that you are currently suffering. And I, I just think I'm, I'm not, so I'm going to be honest, Jack, this is my album of the year. This is, I, th- I think this is a ridiculous album. It's absolutely fantastic. I adore it from the second it begins to the second it ends. I think this album is incredible. I, I, I second, you know, I, I was very much in Coheed and Cambria camp for my album of the year so far. I adore the album. I think it's fantastic. Um, but this is something else, man. That For me, no, this is a the, special, special record. It's, it's been mental for, for albums like that. Alexis on Fire for me. I've never been a, 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 a huge fan before just because I just missed the boat. Uh, mm-hmm. I like the big, the big hits. That album's incredible. Sam Sansa Lyle on that's incredible, yeah. Oh, my God. And then <laughs> I really at the same time that Sam and I did Coheed. I've never listened to a full Coheed album before. That album is mind blowing. Classic. Like, I can't believe how much I like that album. And this, uh, it's the, it's it's uh, it, it's slightly less so with Dayseeker, but I there's so many bands that I wouldn't have expected that are there for me. Um, and and yeah, I mean, they have poured so much of themselves into this. There's so many different things to take away from this album. It's it's it makes it very tough, doesn't it? It's got everything I love in an album as well. I'm a huge I'm a huge '80s fan. I love new wave '80s stuff. You and I have talked about it before because we love Heart of Gold and other yeah. other sort of artists that have done a take on that. To then mix that and do that with this genre, it's not been done in the same way before. But to then make the 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 feeling of that throughout the album something that is so raw it's it's yeah i mean it, it's an incredible incredible album uh and then you put you put afterglow on that at the end and it's always gonna have me <laughs> i'm just in full adoration for what they've achieved here how how open rory has been with his you know pen in terms of pet in terms of writing this album lyrically the genius that is Rory's vocal ability that he's just he just on on his own pedestal i never thought that we'd uh get anyone quite close to Spencer Satello from Periphery. But I feel like with Sleep Tokens vocalist, whoever he is, you're very good, whoever you are. And uh, with Roy Rodriguez, man, Spencer Satello has got some real competition. Or, oh, of course, um, uh, Jared Butler uh, from um, uh, Let Live and what, FIFA 333. Um, but I, yeah, I, I just, I think that... Um, this album is just a really, really special, special moment for alternative music as well. I feel like um, there's going to be like just swathes of just 
Jason Butler, sorry, that lives Valky. So just it just came into my Jason Butler, not Jared Butler. Anyway, uh, there's going to be yeah, I, Jason sounded Butler. Fine sorry, in my ears. <laughs> Jared Butler. One more in the bit. Jared Butler says like a he owns a like a pawn shop. Um, anyway, <laughs> the people that the, the fans that adore uh, Day Seeker and kind of hang off Rory's every word. They've got a special time coming their way on Friday, the 4th of November, because I had a special time listening to this, and I am a big Day Seeker fan, and now I'm a huge Day Seeker fan. This is my album of the year, man. Dark Sun, absolute brilliant, ridiculous, incredible journey through emotion and quality songwriting. Couldn't agree more. Where else could we leave it apart from there, Jack? Uh, in terms of uh, what else we'll be doing on the Noise podcast, uh, you'll do your new Noise series um, over the next few weeks. In terms of new podcast episodes between me and Sam or me and you or you and Sam, not really sure. Going to look at the release schedule, see if there's anything else that's coming out that uh, grabs our attention. But that doesn't mean we're done for the year. We will have a full album of the year show up and coming, and we will have our special uh, with Bangers and Mosh podcast, which we're not fully revealing what we're doing yet. But we are really excited about it, and we do think it's going to be really cool. Uh, a reminder that the best way to uh, support us is by subscribing slash following slash liking depending on whichever service you are using uh, we're available on Spotify podcast YouTube wherever you get your podcast we will be there um, this is us signing off for the time being not sure when we will be back but Jack thank you for your company man this has been awesome it's been a pleasure mate thank you listen to Dayseeker Dark Sun it's my album of the year it's ridiculous uh, what a band Dayseeker are you're going to love it guys uh, thank you for listening uh, we hope to catch you again sometime soon and we love you very much we'll see you later bye <laughs>